Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today is the long-awaited crunch tutorial that a lot of you have been asking for because I get a lot of questions on how I get my crunch and a lot of comments on I can't get my crunch as good as yours. So that is what this video is about today to help you get that crunch regardless if you have fancy kitchen equipment or not. All you need is a large pot and an oven and you can still get that crunch. You don't have to have an air fryer or an instant pot, but they are nice to have. So we're gonna go over three ways that you can prepare your potatoes ahead of time so that you can still achieve the crunch regardless of the equipment you have. First thing you wanna do is wash your potatoes and scrub them if necessary. These are russets, so they're a little dirtier. They need to be scrubbed a little more and then rinsed. Here we have some pre-boiled potatoes. Now, I don't do this very often. I think I honestly haven't done this in probably five years or so. So um, this is kind of an experiment for me. But So I cut the potatoes into wedges and then I put them in a large pot, covered it with water, and boiled them until they got a little bit soft. It's hard to tell from this video footage, but mine did get pretty soft. And what I did was put them in the strainer right away and ran some cool water over them. But in hindsight, I think I probably would have just put them all in a large bowl and thrown them in the fridge right away with no lid or anything, just to help cool them off quicker, or even in the freezer. Some of them are falling apart a little bit, but they're not too bad. Now, I did put the lid on this container when I stored them in the fridge, and there is a little bit of condensation on here, so I would recommend just not putting the lid on, especially for this method, because boiling them in water is gonna add more water to the potatoes, and that's not what we want when it comes to the crunch. We want less water. Next, we have baked potatoes. I bake these in the oven at 420 for about 45 minutes. For baking in the oven, you want to poke some holes in them. It doesn't have to be a lot just so that when they start to really cook inside and build pressure that they don't explode in your oven. So you want to make sure your baked potatoes are squeezable. Let's see how I can, I can dent this. If I had it baked it any longer, it would have been crispy skin, which we do not want. Now these are all russet potatoes. I wanted to keep them all the same so we can have like a more fair comparison between the crunch factor. And lastly, we have pressure cooked potatoes. We're gonna add a cup of water to this. We're gonna put it on seal. Pressure cook on high and go for 10 minutes, or sorry, nine minutes. And quick release as soon as the timer is finished. That's very important because you don't want them to be overdone and soggy. That's what's gonna happen when you, if you leave your pressure cooker on to naturally release, Great for mashed potatoes, but not so great for when you want to do crunchy potatoes. After the pressure cooker has released the steam, I'm gonna take the lid off. So I don't want to create any more heat. So you can see here these are nice and squishy. Just to go over the prepping process, you want to Cook your potatoes enough that they're soft, but not too soft. And you wanna let them cool to room temperature first before storing in your fridge. Okay, we got all our potatoes ready to put in the fridge. I'm probably gonna put a lid on these just because I'm low on space and I need to be able to stack some of these. And as you can see, I'm not gonna be able to put a lid on these. For testing purposes, I'm gonna cook all of these two ways. So. Um, air fryer and oven methods and they're all going to be the smashed wedges style potato because I think that's the easiest one for people to master the crunch. So let's get started. First things first we're going to preheat to 420. Your oven may vary depending on the kind of oven you have. If you have a small apartment size oven you might have to do a lower temperature because they get pretty hot. For oven baking, you want to have a parchment lined baking sheet or a silicone mat lined baking sheet. One of those Silpat liner things that keep it from sticking and make it so that you don't have to use oil. 
And at this stage, if you want to, you could put spices on your potatoes. They will stick. The spices will stick because, as you can see, this is not made out of wood and it's got moisture in it. Moisture will cling to the... <laughs> the spices will cling to the moisture. So I get that question a lot, like, how do you get your spices to stick? Well, potatoes aren't made of wood. Even raw potatoes, you can put spices on. You cut them open and there's water in them. And they will hold on to the spices. Another thing is to not have extra parchment sticking out because that part will burn. That's why I just folded that little piece there. Okay, let's get creative. How can I keep track of what is what? Okay, <laughs> this is just for me. I marked a, a little P and a B on here. So, all right, so we're gonna put the, oh, B means baked. So let's just keep that in mind, even though the boil is also a B. So we're gonna put the boiled potatoes in the middle. Make sure these are all similar sized. So, okay. Okay, so we got our baked potatoes here. Just gonna cut into wedges. How many do we got there? Four, so we'll do four. Just wanna smash it down with a fork. See how easy that is to smash? They just came out of the fridge, so if you've taken your potatoes out of the fridge and they're still really hard, it has nothing to do with your fridge, <laughs> them being cold, it's they weren't cooked enough. So that's one of the problems that have come up with people is they say they can't fork smash. Well, you didn't cook them enough in the first place, so try cooking them for longer, whatever pre-cooking method that you choose. And now we have our boiled potato. Correction, that was a pressure cooked potato, not boiled. These are a little bit smaller, but hopefully that's okay. Okay, now we're gonna test out the air fryer method with all three potatoes. Hopefully I don't get them mixed up. So we have our pressure cooked potatoes over here. Nice and easy to fork smash. We have our boiled, which as you can see, they are kind of falling apart. So it really is tricky to boil and again, don't do what I did. Don't put the lid on when you store them in the fridge because that will just add more moisture to it. And then we have our bait over here. The baked and the pressure cooked have a very similar consistency. I think the pressure cooker ones are just slightly, like have slightly more water content, but not a whole lot. I draw a little diagram so I don't mess this up. Okay, so we got our diagram here. So don't mess this up. All right, the air fryer is done. So let's see what 20 minutes of air frying did to the three types of prepped potatoes. We have our pressure cooked air fried potatoes our boiled then air fried potatoes and our baked then air fried potatoes. And honestly, they all look fantastic. If you find that yours are burning out on the outside, but still kind of soggy on the inside, try reducing the temperature and cooking for longer. Let's taste test one of, or at least part of each different method. So this is the air fried and pressure cooked potatoes. Decent crunch and still perfectly uh, soft on the inside and not too moist. So this is the boiled potato that we air fried. Crispy on the outside, very good. Um, it has more of a, a mealy texture from the boiled potato. So let's try the baked potato that has been air fried. Hmm, 
<clears throat> the pressure cooked ones kind of have a a creamy texture on the inside and the boiled ones kind of have like a mealy texture and then the baked ones have a fluffy texture in the inside kind of like a baked potato on the inside so that's the air fry so we'll wait for the oven ones to finish and we'll do a taste test it's been 39 minutes in the oven and not quite as crispy as the air fryer so if I want the same kind of crispiness then I need to put it in for a little longer 50 minutes in the oven that's about as crunchy as I want to let them get because they're going to start burning they look pretty good Let's give the oven method a try. This is one of the pressure cooker ones. Wow. That is like crunch level 10 here. Hmm. That's really good. I think I like that better than the air fryer method. Now this one is one of the boiled ones that were baked in the oven after. I give it a crunch level seven. Still very crunchy. Um, has that kind of mealy boiled texture on the inside. Still very good. Need some water. And now I'm gonna taste test the baked, baked on baked. <laughs> That's very good too. I give it a crunch level eight to nine very crunchy but wow the pressure cooker one these are amazing they have such a nice texture inside and a really good crunch on the outside and then my least favorite is the boiled then crisp in either the air fryer or the oven the boiled texture just doesn't appeal to me but if this was all i had i would certainly eat it because it still tastes good it's just my not my favorite to summarize from start to finish you want to, number one, pre-cook ahead of time. Number two, cook until soft but not mushy. Three, let cool to room temperature. That's very important. Chill in the fridge overnight with or without a lid, depending on how you cook them. Cut into wedges and fork smash, then cook until crisp and enjoy. I just realized I forgot to record an outro and I just want to thank you for watching this video and I hope you found it helpful. And if you have any questions at all about the whole process, please comment down below because I want to do a follow-up video answering your crunch questions to do a little bit of crunch coaching. So I look forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next video.